All right, guys, feeling here. Still waiting for uh, Psychonauts 2 to download, so we're gonna uh, do more Forbidden West. Why not? Uh, more side content. Uh, I'm probably gonna list the podcast because he really fucking gives a shit. Yeah, let's listen to uh, four Imagine you want to buy a car. Uh, as always. Anyway, um, yes, yeah, so I'm just like knocking, knocking out these like bigger question marks here. Um, and just seeing what these are. It's like it's insane that like there's this like entire thing that I just didn't even know existed. Um, there's that. That's like really okay. Hello everybody. Oh, Hello, so good. Welcome back to the As good. Always podcast. This is episode 159. I'm your host James, and I'm joined as always by Tyler. As always, how's it going, my friend? It's going well. How are you? Not too bad, mate. Not too bad. Happy to be here. Happy to be here with you on this fine su- Sunday evening uh, at the time of recording. Um, yeah, what's been going really on? What's, what's here, happening? Oh, uh, you know, not a lot, but a game in here and there. Um, yeah. All, all the usual gaming. You know, all the usual games. Yeah. yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Exactly. That's good, man. That's good. Um, sh- quick shout out as well to um, your little brother, our little brother. George, it's his uh, 21st birthday today, it is so shout out, shout out, shout out, shout out to George, so if you, if you missed it, send him a message, because it's his 21st, so you can message him a few days later, it's a, it's a, it's a long celebration, are you guys doing anything for it, or have you already done something for his 21st? Uh, we're going out today with, with family for yeah. dinner, and then we're going back to my parents' house to, I don't know what we're doing, but just sort of yeah. hanging out, and whatever, so, yeah. Nice. That's nice. That's very nice. Um, what what else is uh, happening in terms of the gaming? You said. The, what, have you, gaming. what have you been playing? Oh, what have you, you know, been playing? Oh, you know, bits and bobs. Um, I've been continuing to stream Elden Ring, which has been nice. Although I haven't done as much as like I would like. I've been kind of busy working on videos. Finally. Um, oh fuck off! What? Bloody uh, working on this Forbidden West video. I recorded all of it. Um, and finally got around to recording the Shadow War video, so I'm halfway through editing it. It's nearly sort of done. I reckon I can get it done in like a week. And then, uh... That's good. I can have that up while I'm working on this Horizon video, and that'll be cool as well. Um, and nice. I've been... I've started playing, I've started replaying Sleeping Dogs, because I'm like, I need something That's to play. That's a weird one to randomly be playing. Yeah, play. well, it's ten years old this year. And uh, it's wait, one really? that, yeah, it came out in 2012. <laughs> Holy yeah. shit! It's crazy. Oh god, I was looking at myself before in the like recording screen, mm-hmm. and I was like, you're looking old. <laughs> you're looking. No, are you serious? Yeah. And, yeah. and this is um, you know, no, it's just added to my depression, so that's okay. Um, but yeah, so. 10 years sleeping dog. 10 wow, years okay. old, yeah, and I'm thinking, well, I'll make a video on it. I don't think it's going to be a huge one. I think it'll be more like my saboteur video, where I sort of make, like, you know, 26 minutes, something like that. That's a sweet yeah. spot. Uh, and then it's a good video, you know? And it might not get uh, loads of views right away, but it will eventually. My saboteur video is nearing 100k now, which is cool, because originally it flopped, but, you know, it got there over the course of a couple of years, so that's cool. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Sleeping dogs is still fun, so that's good. I that, is good. that is good. And I guess, like like you said, those sorts of videos, they age well. It's that sort of content that ages well. So, yeah, um, yeah, exactly. It's not a major issue if it ne- doesn't necessarily do well in the first week because it could be six months later, randomly it blows yeah. up. You know? Yeah, that's, yeah you just gotta, wait. just gotta wait it yeah. out. Yeah, definitely. There's yeah. a ladder, right? Yeah, oh, that's, that's good, man. That's good. Um, have you planned on to rise in the Midwest? Yeah, I have not, you. no. I might Are you do. planning on, it, on doing might. that? I might. I, I don't really care much about trophies and stuff, but when in this game I really like, I'm like, oh, maybe I'll platinum it, just because I really like playing it. Fuck. Um, yeah. Although, I don't know when I'll do it, because like, I don't know if I can go back to Horizon now. I'm so busy with like other projects and other games. I'm like, when am I going to find time to just sit down and do that? But maybe I will. Yeah. I don't know. We'll yeah. see. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I, um, I think, I, I mean, I was planning Fuck. It. Just because I loved yeah, yeah. playing it so much, and during the time when I was playing it, like this main story, I just didn't want it to end. But once it finished, obviously, it's like, well, that's the end of the story. And I did play a bit, you know, getting a few trophies and stuff. And, I, and I've, 
I know if I sit down and turn on the PlayStation and start playing, I'll just get addicted because it's such a brilliant game. <laughs> but I don't know now. I don't know. I sort of just like... I find it hard to get myself uh, to do that. I guess we can. To sit down. But also, if I'm being... I mean, this isn't Clubhouse. Normally, this is more of like, uh, I guess, a Clubhouse conversation. But we've talked about the stuff on Paul Bill's podcast, and that's always a like, big deal. But I've been... I don't know, pretty low the last week and a bit. Like, haven't been great. Um, and for no, like, nothing's happened. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. th- there's not necessarily like, here's this one thing. And I'm, but I've been, if I'm being honest, I've been pretty fucking depressed the last the last seven days or so. I found it. Like, I've been really r- struggling. And but I've been putting on a face. Like I'm smiling now, man. I and I am. I feel good right now. Um, and if, when I've been around people, it's, you know, I've been fine, but I just, I don't know. Not a bit, I'm trying to figure shit out. It's, I feel like there's a lot of things in my life at the moment that I'm just like a bit mm-hmm. unsure of and just trying to figure out like what I want next. And yeah. I, I feel a, I feel a bit disconnected from yeah. life. I don't know how to explain it. Do you ever, do you understand? Do, am I making any sense? Like, um, I don't know how to explain it. You make sense. Um, I don't know if I've ever felt that way. I don't know. Yeah. But it's just, 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 just sort of like... I, I don't know. I guess I'm a very few, like look-ahead type person, goal-oriented person. And, you know, I've tried really hard, especially in the last 12 months, to just be a bit more present in the moment and just enjoy where I'm at. And, you know, I've, I've always been pretty in touch with myself, but now more than ever, going through the mental health issues I've gone through in the last year I have definitely like gotten very good at knowing when I need certain things if that makes sense like I woke up Monday morning last week and I looked at myself in the mirror I was getting ready for work and I was like ah you're going to have a terrible mental health day today I can tell I just had this feeling I just knew and it just sort of like I thought like I actually had a really good Monday because I did a bunch of things that like strategies that help me sort of get through to like take charge of the day yeah but that it just sort of felt like it snowballed after that mm-hmm. and just sort of got worse and worse and worse and then just a bunch of little things keep adding adding on to it that i reckon like it it was a couple weeks ago and i've been confronted by that i would have reacted a bit differently but it actually really affected me mm-hmm. yeah i don't know but Fuck, that's rough yeah, and I, I, I guess I just don't know who to fucking, like, you know, I haven't talked to anyone about this, so, but we're here now, and I'm just like, I'm obviously have always been pretty happy sharing this stuff, but, yeah, My that's, that's where I'm at, I'm just trying to figure out what's next for me, I, I, I yeah. tweeted out that I was like, it's about time I moved to the UK, right, like, and I, and honestly, yeah. like, that's a serious, 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 it is about time, um, to be honest, thought, thought for myself, and it's something I've had for a while, there like, okay. I was looking at, you know, either the UK or back to Melbourne. And that's something I've been thinking about for the last good, you know, good six months. And I sort of had a good mindset of when and, and where. And I, I think I was leaning, you know, to just at Melbourne again, you know, where I was born, the city I love, um, for various reasons, various goals and stuff. But I also am not trying to rush my life either. Like, it was something I was looking at doing, like, now. Like, it was something I was really actively doing. And... I think because want to know how to love yourself like a legend listen to my radio headspace podcast series I think because I've been very goal focused on a few other things for example like I haven't been doing much video work like I do the podcast I do all that stuff and I'd love to do a bit more even just like posting on my channels like the highlights like I used to do just at the, each podcast so mm-hmm. at least the time on my channel if it's not me making videos it's at least a place where you can see the things I can post things that I've done recently whether that's yeah. podcasts or if I've been featured on someone else's video I can grab clips and just be like this is a channel where it's me for whatever I'm doing yeah. um and uh, but I've just been really focused on and you know for year, many years I've trained martial arts and I've finally found a gym that's like my home like an MMA gym that feels like home and I've got an amazing team around me that I've been working really hard I did like and, and I'm getting ready for a fight and I realize I until I have that fight I can't leave I can't go anywhere so I've sort of buckled into like coming into like 
with work, this is where I'm staying at for now, and with this, that, and the other. And it, in some ways, it's really hard because, like, I might be, like, really down at work inside all day, but then I get to the gym and I'm like, that's that's my happy place. That's the one time of the day where I'm 100% happy, surrounded by my team and coaches, and I can just do what I love to do. You know, I'm a creative person, you're a creative person, but I feel like that's how I express myself now. That's uh, where I found that, and I just need to get that done, I think, before I go anywhere. So my sort of plan is to fight august september there's a date with one of the promotions in july that like i'm happy to go now i'm ready to like i've been trained for so many years i'm 26 yeah. years old i'm ready to True. fight i know how good i am and i know what i can do in there and i you know i one of my teammates fought yesterday i was watching the card and i was sort of scouting out sort of my level and my weight class and i was looking at him i'm like oh james these guys are sloppy as fuck i'm gonna fuck them up dude yeah. like like i i the you know these are 20, 21 year olds that are debuting mm-hmm. and they're just immature and they're just rushing it and they're being sloppy and they're not doing what I'm sure they're way better at doing in the gym. Um, but I know myself and how mentally, you know, focused and, and mentally strong I am in that way. Like I can sit here and, and I have my, you know, my issues with depression or anxiety and stuff, but not when it comes to this sort of thing. Yeah. You know, I, sp- I spend way too much time mentally training for it and I'm just re- ready to, to get in there and, I think once that's done, once that's... It's been in my heart for a long time to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, you you know, you've known that. And a lot of people oh. know that. It's been something I've talked about for yeah. many years. And yeah, it's sure. just something now... It's so close to reality that I can't move or go anywhere afterwards. But that's after that fight is when I'm planning this trip like to go over to the UK mm-hmm. um, and over to the US, like a bit of a celebration tour afterwards. But I really like, you know... It, 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 Maybe it's possible that it's not a tr- it's not a holiday trip, but it's a it's a permanent like trip. Who knows? Who knows? But it's just about finding the Who right knows? work, honestly, and, and doing the visa stuff. And yeah, it's you know, I, I, it's it's just I've got like it's crazy to think that I know that I'll move to a different country, couldn't be further away, mm-hmm. and I have maybe an even better support system there than I do so. here. Which is crazy to think about. So it's crazy yeah, to think about, and and it's not that I don't like. I've got my family, my friends. Like obviously, I've got I've got a great support system here. That's but okay. it's a certain time, and it, maybe it's just a phase thing right now. And maybe it's it is definitely part of what's I've been a bit down about mm-hmm. is feeling a bit disconnected from everyone. Like everyone's got their own lives. Like, I've got a lot of close friends, but they've all got their own lives. They've got partners. They've got shit going on, mm-hmm. um, and. Even my parents, like they've moved. They're 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 like an hour and a half away now, um, uh-huh. and I just I felt a bit like and and David's obviously gone again for thirteen months, and it's yeah. just sort of like I feel a bit alone, like but not in a way of like I'm. It's not necessarily even a bad thing. Because it can be, I, I've been really enjoying my time on my own. Maybe now more than I ever have in the past. Like enjoying my my time with me. But you know, there are certainly times where you you want to reach out to someone and you, you, and that's what I try to do. Like mm-hmm. I know it can be really embarrassing, and this and I say this, and this is partly why I always bring this shit up. But like when you're feeling really low, one of the most embarrassing things is admitting that to someone and be like, hey, can we just like, are you free to hang out? Just I, like I need someone to talk to. And, you know, and, and it's hard to say that because a lot of the time, yeah. like, you'll just reach out and be like, oh, are you free? And they're like, oh, sorry, I'm busy. Maybe, like, next week or the week after. I'm like, oh, cool. And I'm, But I know they would be like, if I told them oh, I really need, like, like a chat, they would, you know, drop yeah. it and be like, oh, yeah, dude, like, 100%. But it's embarrassing to say that. Like, yeah, it's sure. hard to admit to a friend and you feel like, you put it on yourself and you're like, oh, if I tell them that, I'm making them feel obligated to hang out with me and you feel like it's not... Even though, of course, it's genuine because if someone reached out to me, like my friends, and said, hey, man, are you free this week because I'm just having a, a, a tough week and I'd love to hang out? Dude, I'd drop everything. I'd be like, 100%, free tonight, done, you know? Yeah. And there's nothing embarrassing about it. But on the other end, I feel embarrassed. I feel yeah. embarrassed to, to do it. And it's something I, I, I definitely struggle with. And it took me quite a while to be able to admit uh, that to people. Um, but I, uh, 
you know, I've struggled through the week and I finally got to that point, I was like, Tyler, just reach out and actually say what's going on. Hey, you free. I need, like, some, I would love someone to talk to. I've just had a bit of a rough week. Yeah. And, you know, and, and you know, from there, straight away, it's like, yep. Yep, 100% see you tomorrow. Yeah. And, like, that's, you know, that's, it's important. So, like, reach out. It's not, it's not embarrassing. That's part of the, the fucking sickness of it all, right? That's part of, is, like, it tries to make you feel embarrassed to oh even God, seek fuck. help. I thought I had that. Which is, which is, it's the best thing to do. It's the right thing to do. Yeah, for sure. Um, Anyway, that was a weird way to start. I'm sorry. No, here's me. I don't need to apologize for this. This is, this is me being embarrassed for talking about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, this is what we do. This is what we do here, you know. We open yeah. up. We talk about the stuff. Yeah. It's good. It's cool. It's awesome, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, with that, with that out of the way, uh, <laughs> thank you for joining us, everybody, uh, here Welcome watching the, the Footballs Network or listening on all reputable podcast services we wouldn't be here though without the great people over on patreon.com forward slash as always they're the best they they make the show happen quite literally james and i would not be fucked doing any of this anymore no, it'd be if it over. wasn't for them it would be over that we do know um and if you like what you're you know seeing and listening to here and you want to hear or see more head over to patreon.com forward slash as always and for just one dollar a month you get exclusive access to the patreon exclusive podcast the clubhouse podcast that's the best podcast on the internet and yeah. if you like the mental health chats that's where we do it seek advice people ask for advice we give our tips we tell our stories and and we open up i certainly have done the same um yep. especially in the last year and going through that journey and and i know it's up to a lot of people and there's a lot of people that share their stories and that helps other people so it's just something that i think is super important and if you think that's for you just go check it out it's just a dollar wouldn't hurt wouldn't hurt just a te- just a test it yeah, if you don't like it, give it a look over. It's a, it's a one dollar. You've lost a dollar. What's a, what have you got to lose, James? What have you got to lose? Absolutely nothing. I would throw a dollar in the drain. Yeah, I do. Exactly. Like, on a daily like basis. If, if you dropped a dollar, would you really reach out and pick it up? Like, that's no, not, not a, a good, chance. No, no, no that's it's gone. not a good use of time. It's no, not time it's, efficient. That's because the you grounds could make, dollar. Ex- exactly. Because you could make a dollar in the time it took you, James, mm-hmm. to reach down. And grab said dollar. Mm-hmm. You could have made two. I could have. I could have. Exactly. You know what I'm saying. You know what exactly. I'm saying. That's just how it works. And and that's the sigma mentality that it James is. operates on. And exactly. that's what you can learn on patreon.com forward slash as always. So be like that. Put yep. your a month. You've got nothing to lose. And what do you have to gain? Perhaps everything. Everything. Perhaps everything. Your life. You have your life to gain from it. I think so. Yeah. I think that we do know. Definitely. I think that's a, that's definitely a thing. So head over to page.com forward slash as always. And of course, thank you to our producers at the $25 tier and above. We have Ollie the Superior Ollie, Damien, the not so orange gnome, still has my feelings, <laughs> Epic Alaric or Radagast Hardwood, Ferentina, Flash Paradox, Franco, Jasper Austin, King Richard III, Albrecht, Ryan Hafer, Viridian, and Wallsack 47. Thank you, sweet bitches, lads. The helping power of this podcast. Thank you, everybody. Are there really only five it's, it's, it's absolutely unbelievable. Six. It's amazing. Yeah. We love you. Um, there's been there's been a bit going on in the news this mm-hmm. week, but there's one major topic, James. I wanted to talk to you about because I feel like I'm not informed enough about this topic. So I've seen a bit of controversy this week in the games world, in, in the entertainment world, and I have an opinion on it. Okay. But then I see people I trust and respect have a different opinion on it and I realise that, well, I actually don't know anything about it. So I just would love to be informed before I actually give my opinion. Um, okay. And this is on this week's state of play um, mm. for PlayStation and yeah. the new Harry Potter game Hogwarts Legacy. Uh-huh. Um, it had its first gameplay reveal and yeah. with that came a lot of discussion online about... J.K. Rowling, the author of Harry Potter, the, and transphobia, and is it ethical, is it not ethical to purchase Hogwarts Legacy to play this game, even if J.K. Rowling isn't perhaps involved directly in the development of said game? And I feel like I don't fully get what's going on, and I certainly didn't fault like, J.K. Rowling, who gives a f- I'm not a Harry Potter guy anyway, like, I don't give two fucks about the movies, I read the books when I was a kid and I liked them, but I could give a fuck about Harry Potter. Yeah. Um, but, looking at the, like, obviously Harry Potter game, like, I remember playing Harry Potter Chamber of Secrets on the PS2, phenomenal game, one of the all-time great games. Mm-hmm. Um, 
very good game. So the, the idea of having that style of Apple Harry Potter game, I'm like, yeah, I'd play that. That's cool. Like, I'll give that a shot. But then I hear about this, this controversy, and I'm like, well, James, what, what happened? Can you, do you know? Well, I feel like you're pretty informed of what's going um, on, especially when we've got someone in our community like a, like a Jamie Burns. Yeah. Uh, oh, Monster of the Four Pillars. Um, um, give, give it to me. Like, what, what am I mean? What don't I know? What, what did J.K. Rowling say and do that has caused this? And <laughs> why would that then impact a game that she's not directly involved in developing this game? Is that correct? Uh, no, I don't think so. So what would the controversy be? Is it be just because it's her world? Yeah, and I think it's... therefore it's supporting her? I mean, I've talked to Jamie a lot about this. We had a big discussion yesterday on Discord because Nils was also a bit conflicted as to, like, the main reasoning behind why it's, like, a moral dilemma. Um, and I think the main reason is it's not really the same situation as, like, with Ubisoft where we're... Do like, I'm literally doing it because I'm like, I don't want to give this company my money at all. Yes. Um, obviously, whereas with this, like, J.K. Rowling has obviously already been paid for the, you know, for using Harry Potter or whatever, like, the money... Yeah, she's that, not going to lose know, any money on no. the success of this game. Um, she's already got think a fee. anybody is... I don't, no, but I don't think there is anybody, like, in their right mind anyway, that is arguing that we're doing this to not give J.K. Rowling money. Because even if this game completely flopped, she still has plenty of money like and even if like <laughs> even if you never bought another harry potter product for the rest of time and nobody did and harry potter flopped forever she's still insanely rich and always will be yeah, um, that's ne the list you will never change you you yeah yeah, yeah. you'll so, never topple her she's got too much money yeah exactly so that's not what this is about and nobody is trying to argue oh we need to make sure she never has any money like but the point right. here is and this is the way that jamie views it and I completely understand that. And, like, obviously, from my perspective, because Jamie's my mate and he feels very strongly about this, I'm also on his side with it. Um, yeah, okay. And it's okay. the... The trans people and the LGBT community in general, like, it for them, it's personal and they can't disconnect J.K. Rowling from Harry Potter. And to buy sure. something Harry Potter feels like to them, like, if they were to do it, or say a close friend of theirs was to do it, they're going to feel like you're completely dismissing and all like mm. what I'm going through and the things that I have to put up with. And J.K. Rowling, the things that she's said and what she, I mean, she donates to a bunch of different organizations that are anti trans and all of this stuff. Um, Is that because she was very social justice warrior? She for was, time. yeah. She was like, so you have I, to I was very like being a Nazi. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I remember I used to write her the Nazi letters. Yeah. Like, yeah. remember on Twitter it's when weird, I was like. Isn't it? Because I went like as a, a bit of a, a bit of a meme there, and I think like yeah, 2017 yeah. or something, mm. like used to J.K. Rowling tweets for a laugh, and yeah. now she's on the other side of the spectrum. It's really odd. I think she's what did she say? Has she said stuff, or is it about the support of organisations? It's I, that, I, but it's I, also, but she, it's literally all her Twitter is now is her engaging with these like weird right wing organisations and like and having all these statements and like running these campaign like whatever she does like and it's it's all this just twisted like it's just transphobia she just doesn't like trans people and wants to delegitimize them as you know their existence and be like no it's not real it's all fake like it's just men trying to harm women or whatever uh, but she, she she dresses it up as this like protecting women like issue and i just she's coming from the complete wrong place like i don't think I don't think, like, in her mind, she thinks, oh, I'm being a terrible person. Like, she obviously believes what she's saying, like, anybody does. But, like, what she's saying, she has a huge platform, and it, it is really, like, it's incredibly harmful. Like, the stuff that she's saying and, the, like, what she engages in and the, the people she talks to and the people she gives a platform by retweeting that, you know, might not have had an audience otherwise that are spouting the same stuff that she is. And, you know, donating her money to these organisations, it's just... With, when it comes down to Harry Potter, oh. it's a matter of, yeah, this game is disconnected from J.K. Rowling to an extent in development, but Harry Potter is directly connected to J.K. Rowling, and it never won't be, no matter if she's involved or not. And so trans people feel if you're supporting this, you're sort of, you're dismissing what they feel and the fact that they're going through this and J.K. Rowling's doing this and you're, like, it's, it's like if, I think a similar thing, and this is what I said, Yes, they are Discord. It's like a similar thing is the 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 Jimmy Savile show that he did. Jim will fix it. Jimmy Savile, for anyone that doesn't know, was a like a 
big celebrity in the UK for a while, and then it came out after he was dead that he was a big old nonce. Um, oh, it'd be yeah, right. like if they brought back his show, Jim will fix it, but like with a different host. It would still be really mm-hmm. fucking weird and like in right, bad yeah, taste yeah, I think that's and, true like, because you, you associate it with the knots. It's directly associate, associated to him, and like bring that, you're you're then you're you're essentially giving Jimmy Savile again a platform, despite him being dead, despite wow. him not obviously being on the show. That's you're still cool. giving what he did a platform and being like this is great and that is always going to have an effect and is always going to give a platform to the original creator of the thing and so i completely understand that i obviously also completely understand the idea that not everyone is going to want to fight this fight like that's just how it is you can't do everything and someone that buys hogwarts legacy might be fighting another fight. They might be boycotting some other company that mean that's something that means a lot to them. You never yeah. know. And so Imagine fighting every fight there is that you it's, see. It's in just life. Not you possible. would be exhausted. It's just not. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I think I put a put a thread out on Twitter and I think it just comes down to I've seen a lot of people trying to like justify and be like, well actually I'm not doing anything wrong. It's like look, if you you are and that's okay as well. Like, if someone wants to buy a Ubisoft game, I don't think they're a terrible person. But obviously, yeah. I'm so close to that situation that it's going to aggravate me. Like, when I see someone being like, oh, I bought the new yeah. Far Cry, I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake, man. But then i got to remember, they're not... This is just isn't a fight they want to fight. Like, it's not personal to them. You can't push that passion onto somebody that to, to, to fight back against something like this if they don't feel it in themselves. Um... Yeah. And so it's one of those things where I completely get how the trans community feels. I completely understand that. I think that's completely valid, and I get it, because it's similar to how I feel about Ubisoft, and it must be more so, because they're directly, you know, they've directly been affected by this. It's their community. It's who they are. Um, whereas, obviously, I haven't been sexually abused and harassed by Ubisoft. But I, yeah. So I completely understand, like, that that's even more um, than what I feel. And so I think that it's it's completely okay for these people to feel upset or angry that people are just dismissing jk rowling completely be like i don't really care i just want to buy the wizardy game um because to them it's like wow you completely just you just don't care like but you know you can't care about everything all the time and i think some people are being dismissive on purpose i think some people just you know have decided this isn't something they want to fight but i guess to me the most annoying thing is people saying people trying to justify and be like no there's absolutely nothing wrong with this at all but there there is you know there is something wrong with it and i think there's there's validity in in wanting that people not to engage with harry potter media anymore um and so i think it's a matter of if you have personal stakes in this and you know somebody close to this and somebody that's been affected or 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 has somebody that's been affected like you know obviously i you know, Jamie Burns is a really good friend and he knows people that have been directly affected by things J.K. Rowling have said or organizations she's contributed to, like people that have, you know, you know, committed suicide or, have, you know, been really depressed because of, you know, this domino effect of this just intolerance from people like J.K. Rowling. And so to me, it's just like I just don't I just don't want to engage with any of that. Like I'm just like I am just want to separate myself and be like, no, I don't want anything to do with any of that stuff in it. It's tough because Harry Potter was a big part of my childhood. I absolutely loved Harry Potter. It was a huge thing that I loved growing up. But it's just, yeah, to me, it's just too messy. Like, J.K. Rowling is Harry Potter, and Harry Potter is J.K. Rowling. I can't separate those things in my head. I just think if you can separate the art from the artist, I feel like that's a, like, I can't do that. I feel like I just can't do that. It's too difficult for me. Um, And I think that... Yeah, I don't know. I just think it's it's a really weird, messy situation. I don't think anyone's a bad person for playing Hogwarts Legacy. Um, but I also don't think that the people getting upset about it are wrong either. So I, I can see all the sides, to be honest. Yeah, it's... That is a hard one. That is a hard one. So certainly beforehand, I was like, I don't really know. I don't see that how to feel about it like I, I'm happy to admit that I don't know um, and I'm like well if she's not directly involved then it's just a Harry Potter game I'm sort of like well like to, to, uh, what are what is the fight but you know you having you having explained that I'm like I can certainly see what, what you're saying and certainly see how um, it's more of an association thing for people um, and, and and what Harry Potter now represents 
to some yeah that's they pretty see much that. what it is it's like harry yeah, potter no, there's, represents there's, there's, that that platform that jk totally. rowling has so, totally I, I i get that like i that's why i feel we like it, it's even hard playing the old assassin's creed games you love sometimes mm. because you still you now associate that thing you once loved with something that has hurt a lot of people and like you said like we can't fight every fight and i just, this is just a fight i don't know a lot about and, and you've now explained it to me but even then i'm like i still feel like there's probably i'm probably still not informed enough to sit here and spew out an opinion just yeah, from yeah. that um i like let's be honest i probably wasn't gonna play this game anyway yeah, so right. i feel like it certainly wasn't really a fight that i was like necessarily needing to have um, yeah, yeah. or really something i needed to like tackle morally within oh. myself like am i gonna yeah, play yeah. Like, see, i don't give a fuck about harry potter you as it yeah, is you know you don't like harry potter yeah. that much anyway yeah yeah like, so it's whatever yeah, so it's like if it was a lot of, like if I found out J.R.R. Tolkien was like a fucking Nazi in the 1940s, <laughs> like that came out, that got revealed, that would fuck up a lot of things in my life. Yeah, you know what I rough. mean? Like I that'd be real because I'd like to think, well, you separate the art from the artist. I'm like, I don't know if you can. When what what Lord of the Rings and the world of Middle Earth represents so much of like it's it's more than just a story. It's about like the messages it gives you and the hope. But when you find out the messages are from a fucking Nazi, like yeah, you'd be yeah. like, well, they become redundant meaning and messages, don't they? You know what I mean? All of a sudden, Sam's speech at the end of the Two Towers doesn't hit as hard. You know what I mean? There's yeah, how can you, Mr. Frodo? You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, but what's he what's he really saying? You need to look at all those like. <laughs> And obviously, J.R.R. Tolkien, not a Nazi, thank no, God. No. You know what I mean? Like, thank yeah. God. Um, great man, one of the great, you know, liter literary minds in history. Um, but I look at that and I can totally then see how it would fucking ruin, ruin all that for yeah. you. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I can appreciate that, 100%. Um, and I'm not saying calling J.R.R. Tolkien, J.R.R. Um, Tolkien, um, J.K. Rowling, yeah, you know, like a Nazi, or I'm not even sure if that's comparable. It's a, I feel like, you know, but then again, it, it affects people perhaps all the same. Like again, I'm not, I don't know, I'm not um, a trans person, um, and I've never had to deal with any of that. Like I feel like that's a side of of um, the world I'm not very informed on. Like I don't like I know people that are trans but i don't have any close friends that are mm. you know what i mean like i don't have anyone like really close in my life that is it's not something i've really been confronted by in the sense of like i mean i'm fine like i don't give a fuck if someone's trans it doesn't bother be who you want to be i don't care but in yeah. terms of like seeing the issues and being informed on how people feel i'm not and i can't say that i am yeah, yeah. you know what i mean like i struggle when I see certain debates, like, I really struggle, the biggest debate I struggle with in terms of, like, uh, transgender people is, is sport, because that's the w uh, world I'm certainly way more involved yeah. in. Yeah, well, that's And, it. like, there was big stuff over the weekend with, with the swimming in the US where a, uh, uh, a transgendered woman, that's the right way to say that, isn't it? If a, if a uh, born, born a male and becomes or identifies as a female, you're a transgender woman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, fuck. No um, worry, you're good, you're I'm, just, good. I'm just, you know, with the greatest respect, James, with the greatest respect, if I say that, it's fine. Um, <laughs> Crash mac and cheese. If your parents don't buy it, stop losing them. Cut! This might be my fault. Like, a transgender woman um, won gold at this, uh, uh, was it the end? I forget what competition it was. Um, I'll have to look it up, but, um... That was obviously very controversial because yep. it is a scientific fact that the male body and the female body are different. Oh. You know what I'm like, just yeah. genetically the, the speaking. The thing with that is that it obviously should be a thing. Um, I feel like that's sort of like an obvious thing. And it's obviously in a lot of cases it isn't. Um, there are those instances where it is, and it, it shouldn't be because it's completely unfair. What do you mean that it is, it is? It is what? So, so uh, t trans women should not be competing against biological women because Correct. it's I agree. not uh, that I agree. It's with. not a fair. It's not fair. You can't. Yes. You shouldn't be doing that. Um, yeah. But 
it's not the norm and obviously when those moments happen obviously there should be you know a conversation with people like right okay well this shouldn't be happening in the future because you can't like as much as we want equality you can never you can never like make a man's body not have the capabilities that it has in terms of yes sport kind of a sport yeah. um and so obviously that is difficult because someone that you know is a trans woman they obviously to them they're a woman like they you know that's how they feel that's how they identify that's how they yeah live their lives and so that does suck that if they have a passion for sport they can't compete with women they would have to compete with men because it would it, it would like i mean that's a whole conflict there and it's like how do you how do you and there's, help those there's people, a conversation but, to be had and i think will be had in the future i'm not going to be surprised if there is a like a non-binary or a, like a whole other division in sport um, created in many sports in the future, and I'm curious to see which is the first sport to attempt that, where it is for people that identify as, like, and they choose, like, okay, I can't, like, I identify as a woman, but I was born a man. I'm not allowed to compete with women, and that's fair. So I can either compete with men, or there's this other category I compete in, like a non-binary type. Yeah, potentially. Like, but like I, I'd be interested to see where this goes because certainly something's going to come up, but it's not something that's fucking rampant in sport. Let's not pretend it's anything. Know, but like, uh, it does come up, and it has come up. Like it it's has, something yeah, I, for sure, for sure. The, in, in my particular sport, that's the biggest part of my life, mixed martial arts. It's a very, like, I take that really seriously. I don't like when a transgender woman competes against a biological woman because this is their lives on the line like potentially this is their real yeah, health sure, sure. they're fighting each other in a cage james like it's it's not it's not fair yeah and that's not to say because there's been because there's just transgender women that suck at fighting and have then lost to to biological women right so like it's not like 100 percent of the time but on the whole it's not fair it just isn't and that's no, yeah, my sure. opinion on that but that's I have nothing against a trans person. Nothing to do with it. This is a whole other, whole other topic. Yeah, it's whole just how it topic. is, and it's it's obviously a conversation that that will be had. But I think one of those like this that is one of the things that J.K. Rowling uses as the like front piece to sort of push what she's selling, and it, right? it's, it's like, the so I don't. Different. There's not many people really, unless like they're completely uninformed, that would disagree with that trans people should not be competing against some like trans women should not be competing against biological women and the same with yeah. with trans men and men um yeah and so there's not i don't think i don't think anyone in their right mind feels the other way about that unless like you're completely irrational um but jk rowling uses that to further her point, to be like, look how ridiculous this is. It's the same stuff. It's like, just totally different topics altogether. Exactly. Just, like she, you know she I mean? will, she, she uses that to push forward the idea that, oh, look, it's this, it's fake. Like, you know, they're just trying to hurt women. Like, she genuinely believes that trans women are just out to hurt women and take advantage of women. And that's so insane. It's, 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 so it's insane, just, dude. it's just wild. It's actually yeah. wild. But you're talking about a literal billionaire, a billionaire. She's a billionaire. What, like, she's not very in touch with the regular people. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think... You can't look at these people that are the one percenters. The one percent of one percenters in terms of financial status. Like, el the elite. And you can't look at them and be like, they have a good grasp of the, of the real world. Yeah, no, and, they do like, not. What people are going through. And they don't. And you can't look at J.K. Rowling for that. No, you know? for sure. But of course, there'll be people that are like, that agree with J.K. Rowling and what she's saying. It'll then use her as like, the example. Like, all of a sudden, these fucking church going Christians. Like, I went to a Christian high school, like, um, a very religious school. <clears throat> and, man, you could not talk about fucking harry potter there and i have friends that grew up very christian and never saw harry potter weren't allowed to watch harry potter because it's witchcraft Wild. like that's that's a thing and guess what they're all watching now james they love it <laughs> they love harry potter oh, now bro God. they've got tucker carlson's fucking spitting facts ben shapiro has never loved witchcraft more in his life oh my God. Um, yeah that Ridiculous. beautiful jewish man and i can say that because i am a Jew. that's true um, you are i yeah. am jewish i am that we do know that we do. That's we do know that, yeah. I'm genetically, biologically, 
in my blood. Jewish. You are. So, mm -hmm. you know. Um. <laughs> oh, is it like just, is it just straight up down there? Uh. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm laughing about okay. it because it's I just something it's that's actually just Yeah, exactly. Still that we're I trying, still behind. trying to adjust. I, I'm not used to it yet. I'm not used to, like, yeah. people are like, Tyler, why are you wearing hats all the time? It's like, oh, I'm just trying to get used to it. You know what I mean? On these podcasts? Yeah, yeah, that makes so much sense. It's actually because my hair's getting longer, and when I forget to, like, shower and do my hair before we're recording, I'm like, I can't be on a podcast with my hair looking like this. I need to put a hat on. <laughs> That's uh, why I wear hats a lot in podcasts. Um, but you know, eventually, I very well may get you know, get a get a get a young uh, You don't know. You don't know. I don't no, know. No. I'm yet to explore out. my Jewish heritage. Mm. I'd like to. I'd like to. You know. Yeah. Got to learn. You know, learn history. Yeah. Um, while we were talking about this, I was watching the gameplay for the first time for Hogwarts Legacy. What, mm -hmm. like, did you watch it, or were you like, yeah, no, yeah. I'm not I watched it live. Uh, what did you did think it, about yeah. it then? Like, just uh, uh... managing a team of technicians is like herding kittens, really greasy kittens. Uh, we got. I think I thought it was important to have this conversation first that we've just had, <laughs> but then. I did also want to talk about, like, okay, ob let's just objectively, these game developers obviously work very hard. What do we think of the gameplay and the game itself? I think it looks shit. Do you really? Okay. Yeah, I think it looks shit. Um, what, what do you think looks so shit about it? I mean, a lot of people are going to disagree with me. This is a hot take. But to okay, me, uh, a game called Hogwarts Legacy, where you're playing as a 15-year-old Hogwarts student, and that's the, yeah. that's the game, needs to convey, at least in a 20-minute showcase, a focus of the game. And I didn't get any of that. I didn't get any substance. All I got was, here's this feature, and here's, you get a room yeah. requirement, and in the room requirement, you can level up and upgrade gear and plant seeds and do potions, and then also you can fly around way outside of Hogwarts and go down to a village and pick up side quests and go into a hidden secret dungeon in the mountains. I'm like, why? Why? Why am I doing this? Like, in what's Hogwarts the story? Legacy, like, there's, like, there's no story. There's no story. I feel like I've got no context. I feel like there's no, there's just no focus here to like ground me in the game and be like, oh, okay, so goodness. this is what my character's doing. Why is my character doing this? Who are they? Like, why are they when interested the in going? When's the game set? It's like set in the 1800s. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's quite far yeah. in the past. Hogwarts is a little bit different. I mean, Hogwarts looks incredible. Like, they've yeah. recreated Hogwarts. It looks so cool. Um, and yeah, that's yeah, really cool. great. Um, but beyond that, I just did, there was nothing in the game that made me go, yeah, I want to play this. Because to me, like a game like that should be a core focus, like 50% of the game, it should almost be like a persona game where 50% of the game is you're at school and you're making relationships with friends. And like, that's that whole RPG aspect of it, where literally like 50% of the game is just the Hogwarts simulator experience. And the other 50% is this mysterious story that keeps cropping up and you have to explore and figure out. But it feels like it's like, I'm going to be spending my time going off and like, picking up side quests from some random village. I'm like, why am I doing that? Like, what? what it seems so odd as like a inclusion in the game. Um, yeah. Uh, and like, I don't know, the combat looks really boring because they're like saying, oh, yeah, there's loads of combinations, but they literally just kept using the same combo over and over again. Lift someone up, pull them closer, keep hitting them with a few attack spells, they die, move on to the next guy. And I'm like, this looks just, it just looks boring to play. Um, so yeah. I, yeah, I didn't get anything from this. Like, I'm a huge Harry Potter fan. I thought this would, I thought I'd be, I thought I'd be loving this regardless, but I was just like, meh, it just looks kind of boring to be honest, which. Yeah. Sucks, because the devs were really passionate about it in their little behind-the-scenes bit. They seem like they really are loving what they're doing, and that's cool. Um, but, yeah, I just didn't... There's nothing it in there that I thought I loved. I, it does look a bit Unity, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, it just looks like, visually, you, in the detail, the graphics and the world and everything around, I'm like, man, this looks incredible. But then you're sort of watching the gameplay, and you're like, it Where looks a bit off. Like, there's just something, yeah. that Unity vibe about it, that I'm like, it just looks like it's not quite ready to be shown yet. Yeah, something's, something's off there, something's not quite right. You see, like, the animations yeah. of, like, casting spells and stuff, and I'm like, that looks a bit janky, that's a bit weird. Yeah, um, and it's 
it's almost like the way that, and and it's almost like an un, almost unfixable thing. Like it's not like a time thing. It's like you've chosen this sort of direction for it, and I don't think you know how to nail it. I think this is the best you can do with it. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the direction you've chosen. I think you, you'd need to like the way it sort of gets janky and slows down with the roll and stuff. Like you see what they're trying to do, but it just sort of it it looks unity. It looks yeah. very unity. I get. I totally agree. I got that vibe, even from like facial animations and just like yeah. people in the background and stuff. Like I was looking at just character models in the background of scenes, and I'm like, that looks a bit weird. Yeah, I noticed um, that right away. It was like a classroom in the background. Like the faces would, it, you, I could see the level of distance, like model changing, in as the camera adjusted. I'm like, that's really jarring. No, it's like seeing someone's face change from like low res to high res in like the same scene i was like that's very unity um, yeah yeah so to me it just looks i mean and like people will say well you know the game's not out yet it's still got you know a few more months in development and yeah that's true but you look at it's when true. they showed god of war or horizon forbidden west we didn't you don't have oh, these yeah. complaints if, if this was just a, this is just how game dev works i would see this in every single game demo but you don't. Yes. But you, you only don't. see it in the ones that when they release, they're also yeah. fucked. So has there ever you know, been a game, James, where you've looked at it and been like, man, I don't know, it looks like it's <laughs> off, and then it comes out, you're like, wow, no, actually, it was perfect. I don't no, think that's ever happened. It's never happened. I don't ever. think that's ever happened. Never. I think 100 percent of the time, if it looks off, it's because it is gonna be off. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's not that much they can change. Like, sure, I'm sure they can fix like glitches that we haven't seen right in between now and then but they're not going to fix the core animations that, no. that the engine's running with like and there are things that look really good there are things that look really good more environmental yeah, things sure. um but i'm more thinking in terms of the characters and even the combat it just looks very unity this looks yeah. very unity to me um but but like you said i mean in terms of what they've built in the world which is pretty fucking incredible yeah, it does. You know, if I was a big Harry Potter nerd, I'd probably fucking, like, come in my pants. Like, if this was a Lord of the Rings dream game that I've hoped for, you know, and this is what I saw, I'd be very excited. I'd agree. I'd be like, look, I'm, I, I'm worried, too, that it'll be a bit uni, but you know what? Even if it is a bit uni, I'll probably still love it, because fuck you. It's Lord yeah. of the Rings. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And that's okay to think that. It's okay to be a Harry Potter fan and for it to be sort of shit, but you still love it because it's like, you know what? The core yeah, is still yeah. Harry Potter and it gives me the vibes and I love the vibes. I mean, I'll bring on vibes here on the Azores podcast. Do, so we can appreciate true. that. We can appreciate that. We definitely can. We understand that. Yeah. It's. Um... And I would feel the same way if it was Lord of the Rings. I'd feel the exact same way if you were perfectly reconstructed, like, movie-looking, like, Hobbiton. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Edoras. In Rohan, Isengard, Helm's Deep, Minas Tirith, like those sorts of locations, I'd be like, dude, if you showed me an open world Minas Tirith, I'd come in my pants. Oh, and it looks like so the sick. visuals of this. Like, oh, when you think about an open world Lord of the Rings game, is there anything that's. It's too much, obviously. You can't, like, because you'd settle for nothing less than a full scale Middle Earth, and it's just fucking impossible. Yeah, um, I don't know. But, Ubisoft would try. <laughs> And oh, don't even say that. They do don't more. even. They wouldn't just say do middle earth. They do everything. Oh, they just they they tack on more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy like a launch thing. Okay, it's like seems to be like closer to here. Actually, that makes sense if it's like taken from like the front of a building. 
this is like near the front or so. Uh, just aren't on a map still because I think that's like every major question mark right hey, what are we still missing we're still missing we're still like one more of those I guess we have all the black boxes Oh fuck, we're like 50 minutes. I didn't realize we were that late into this. So I really wasted a lot of time. Yeah, they'd be like, here's the, the yeah, DLC in, in Numenor. All right, let's just finish the, the black know, box. Just fuck it up. It's bigger than The Witcher 3. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. I can't believe yeah. that they actually released that thing, did they? I know. That, it came um, out. What was it called? Ragnarok. Um, Dawn of Ragnarok. Dawn of Ragnarok. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine the balls to do that the year God of War Ragnarok's coming out. Oh my god. That's Imagine funny. the balls to do that. Um, uh. I was watching, have you watched season. Oh, you would have. Um, this is something else I want to talk about. Let's, like, moving on from Harry Potter. I feel yeah. like we've given enough to Harry Potter. No matter the size of your fleet, a mom and pop with a couple of vehicles, or a big box shop with thousands of them, Ford Pro Telematics can help increase your productivity by providing real-time updates like vehicle health and live GPS tracking. Introducing a productivity accelerator for your business, Ford Pro. While the NBA looks back on 75 years, the NBA G looks to what's next. The next diamond in the rough turned NBA gem. Welcome to the world's most G League. I do for you, Aloy. I'm giving enough time upon it. The Last Kingdom, oh, I season seen it five. Yet. I haven't seen you it. haven't seen it. One no. of your best friends is I in know. the show. I know, and I've like seen clips of a minute because I like wanted to see a minute, but I, <laughs> I'm scared of the Viking show. Um, but you thought, like you've seen season one to four of The Last Kingdom. I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I you like The Last it. Kingdom? Yeah, I like really? The Last Kingdom. I liked Richard it when I watched Edinburgh. it. King, King Alfred, that's, you know. Yeah, I remember bits. A, I remember bits. It's, a, it's one of my favourite shows. It's a good show from Netflix memory, yeah. Done. I really, really love the and, and to be fair as well, like, Last Kingdom is like, the whole show's like, the last seasons of Game of Thrones where it feels really rushed, but it's always been that way, so it's sort of okay. It's like, that's the way the show is. Uh, like, you know, it's it just not skips the a last lot of season. Time. It's better than season eight of Game of Thrones. Oh, it's way better. It's like, not even the story is better, but I just mean in terms of the pacing where events just happen, happen, happen. Oh, happen, yeah, happen, the happen. world building is not like. Yeah, like, yeah. it's not the best world building. They don't like, it's what it is. But it's a beautiful show, and the actors love it. And you can tell they love it because their performances show that. Yeah. Like, you just love the characters and the relationship that these characters have to each other. And I'm such a big fan of Last Kingdom. I thought that... Oh, no. The others who captured the Osiram Delver heard the voices from these ancient warriors, too. They spread the word, and now a lot of people are talking about them. <laughs> Soldiers are interested in old battles. Hey, I have some more of the voices you're looking for. I'm sure I can learn much from them. Oh, they, they get you like supplies? I don't know what I need though.
Like, what a weird thing. Let me know when you want to trade for those voices. I'll see if the signal leads me to another recording. All right, I mean, I guess we'll just save. Um, just fast travel. Fuck it. So I could take that long. Whatever. So again, that'll probably be it for Horizon for a bit. Like, I feel like this is one of those games I can come back to at any point. Like if there's a point where like I only have like an hour uh, in between games, then maybe I'll go and play this instead. But yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching.